What is up everybody and welcome back to episode 13 of our Pro Cyclist Career Mode where today we will be looking at the Tour de Limousin to get back in the winning mood after we took the national championship jersey for the Czech Republic for the second year in a row. And I thought now before we got into the race would be a good point to just kind of show the stats for Vladimir Saracen again. In the mountains, not so good. In the hills, he's great. But we really need to work on that stamina and resistance if we want to be a threat for any of these big races in the future. But before the start of the Tour de Limousin, turns out we have been called up for the World Championships 204.2 kilometer hilly stage that we look pretty well suited for. We do have a negative race day condition, but you know what that means. With our willpower bonus, we can get up to a plus three. And of course, I don't think we can go head to head with the best in the world, so we're gonna look to get in the breakaway early on and see if we can stay away. Right now we've got Bob Jungles and it's Figueredo. I don't know who that is, but Bob Jungles is a good start to a strong breakaway. And with 150k left, we did manage to establish a breakaway. The Peloton fought really hard, but we've got ourselves, Nico Dens, Bob Jungles, and Mark Padun. So a strong breakaway for a hilly stage. And we jump ahead with about 38k left. We are still in front but there is an elite group about 50 seconds behind us, and in that group is Tare Pogacar, so we are going to have to pull a little harder than we'd like, because if he catches up to us, then this stage is officially over. And it has happened with about 28k left to go. You can see Brandon McNulty, Ben Tullett, Tom Pidcock, Tare Pogacar, Peo Bilbao, Mark Hirschi, and Mads Pedersen have all joined the front group, which is terrible news for us. And with 19k left, Vanderpool, Van Aert, Caleb Ewan all deciding to launch their attacks on the flat section, which is the worst section they could have attacked on for us. Ben Tullett also trying to get across. But the Peloton did link up with the front group for just a second, and they just immediately attacked. Rough stuff here for Vladimir Saracen, who's been in the breakaway all day and with 14k left to go we did catch that group at Alaphilippe and Matthew Vanderpool looking to make a move at the top of this hill we're trying just to hold on until we can get to the downhill get a little bit of our red bar back and it looks like we're just going to be able to do that as Wout Van Aert can hopefully bridge us to those front two but Vanderpool, Alaphilippe looking incredibly strong right now. As another attack goes up the right side, we can't respond. Uh, we'll try to. We'll set our effort to 92, try to follow Primoz Roglic, but it looks like that move has died down. So we're just going to calm ourselves, and another attack flies up. Asgren, Garcia Cortina, and Vanderpool, just as the downhill starts, they're going to get about 12 seconds. But I think that's definitely going to be climbed, clawed back before the uh, end of this race. And with about 6k to go, Vanderpool and Asgren kind of doing their own thing up front. And we do not have the stamina to chase that down. We want to get to the top of this little hill with some kind of stamina. Our goal right now is to try and finish in the top 10. It was a little bit of a higher objective earlier but I think right now I, I don't even think we're gonna have the legs for that too many strong riders but a valiant effort for Vladimir Saracen today as we can wait to see who's gonna come across the line first is it gonna be Asgren or Alaphilippe as we officially crack we'll get a nice little view here and it's gonna be Matthew Vanderpool coming in first followed by Wout Van Aert and Julian Alaphilippe, Matthew Vanderpool, though, just like in real life for 2023, he's going to be your world champion for the next season. So we come across the line in 19th place, just behind Remco Evenepoel. And at the end of the day, a pretty good result, all things considering. It 
wasn't on our calendar. We did not prepare for it. We were at 88% fitness. We did have the plus three day thanks to the willpower bonus, but a top 20 sandwich between Remco Ebnepool and Julio Chicone is not bad for a Conti pro rider. And we will get three points for a top 20 in the world championships. Uh, it seems a little low, but I mean, we can take what we can get, I guess. And since it has ticked over and transfer season has started, there's some interesting teams in the mix here. Team Medellin has recruited Lenny Kemna, Team Aaronsman, and Casper Asgren. And when it gets time for us to start getting our contract offers, I can't help but think if Medellin offers us, we might be interested with that lineup. But up next, we do have the start of the Tour du Limousin. 174.3 kilometer hilly stage. Um, I don't think it's going to be too selective. Uh, we, if it is selective, we should be there or thereabouts. Our fitness is in a decent spot. And we are not one of the favorites. Uh, if we look at the start list, Benoit Cousinefoy, Romain Grégoire, Axel Zingla. Uh, this is a pretty tough group to compete with, but we've done it before, and I have faith that we'll be able to do it again. And at the start of the race, we are on a minus two day, so not ideal. We're just going to look to stay with the group and not lose any time through this first stage. And we're here with 15k left to go. The breakaway still has about 55 seconds left, but we are getting close to this last little climb, and our stamina is in a great spot. I assume everybody else's is too, but we're going to go ahead and move to the front and see if we can push an attack that can leave people in our wake. So we're going to look to attack over the top of Kessler and Walton. Looks like we're not creating a ton of separation, but right now we have nine seconds on the peloton. We can at least make them work and make sure we don't get dropped up this final climb. So they have closed us down, but it looks like they're suffering. So we come over the top front of the group, and I think that ensures that this stage is going to end in a sprint finish. And with 6K to go, Aurelien Paripontre is up there trying to stay away. But we do have a little lead-out train going for Romain Cardiz, and hopefully we can bring this back right before the finish as we're going to look to lead out. They are moving over to the right side, looking like we are going to catch them with our pace as Grolier can go ahead and start his sprint with 2K out, or with 2K to go, sorry. And then with 1.3, we can start ours. Romain Cardi can also start his sprint, and it looks like we are going to come around and come across the line in second place. Old Donnie on the far side. We couldn't see him. But <laughs> two riders in the top five. A great day for St. Michel Albert, but oh, I really thought we had that stage one. And after that great result in the Tour du Limousin, we have received our first offer. It is to renew our contract by St. Michel Mavic Albert for the 2025 season. We have until August 23rd to make our decision. It's the 17th right now. I think I'm going to sit on it because the team that they're going to be bringing back next year looks incredibly weak. I think they only have one rider under contract, so I think it's going to be a better decision for us to look elsewhere. But that does bring us to the second stage of the Tour de Limousin, a 167.6 kilometer hilly stage with a nice little ramp. It doesn't look like it's going to be too steep. That could be perfect for us. So we're currently sitting in third place, four seconds off the lead. If we take a look at the favorites, we are in fact fourth favorite behind Lorenzo Rota, Benoit Cousinefoy, and Romain Grégoire, but I like our chances against them. And here with just about 9k left to go, breakaway has been caught and everything looks like it's going to be geared up for that final climb. And it uh, looks like there's some moves that are being made a little late in the day. I think it's uh, 
too late for all that. Whoever's going to be the best climber at the end of the day is going to win this. And hopefully that's going to be us. Old Donnie trying to block us off already. He knows what's coming. But with 5.5k left to go, Grolier leading us up. And we're going to pop our gel right at the bottom of the climb. Set our effort to 92. Make sure we're getting the most out of our hill stat. And maybe pull it back a little bit. We don't want to burn out too early. But we do want to make the people behind us use their energy as much as possible. And that's going to be Matisse Louvel coming up on our left. But we're going to go ahead and turn the screw a little bit. See if anybody can keep up with us. And right now our energy gel is in effect. So we're going to go ahead right here at this flat part. Turn it up to 92. And try to pace as far as we can hopefully get a little bit of a sprint off hopefully Louvel went a little too early I think that's gonna be the case we do get a tiny little sprint and we're gonna come across the line and take stage two no we're not Gregoire on the far side again this has been the tour of bait and switch Gregoire barely got us on the line and that's two stages that that's happened in and it seems like a case of always the bridesmaid, never the bride. But with consecutive second place finishes, we will take the lead on GC ahead of Stefano Aldani by two seconds. Gregoire sitting back there on the same amount of time difference. So we're going to have to be on guard here on stage three. And we do finally get our first look at stage three. 185 kilometer hilly stage. It looks about the same as yesterday, so I would expect... Uh, Similar type of result, similar type of race for us. And Gregoire is by far and away the favorite, followed by Kuznafoy, and then ourself, or myself, sorry. So, I mean, we're going to give it a go again, and hopefully this time Gregoire won't be able to get us on the line. And with 10k to go, the race is back together. It's been basically a carbon copy of the last stage. So we are not feeling too worried at this point. We do want to be in a good position at the base of that climb because I think instead of just trying to pace it like we did last stage, we're actually going to go for a little attack as people are starting to crank the pace now. Nobody wants anybody else to come around, but we're going to try and brute force our way around this side. And we are fourth wheel, which looks to be a good position for this downhill, Perez coming around. Yanni Tsagire, Hugo Page, Anthony Tergi. We're up here with the big names, and we're going to show that we belong today as we set ourselves up at 89. And we can go ahead and launch an attack straight from the bottom. We want to use our acceleration and save a little bit. So we can go 89 pace. We do have a 20 second gap on the field behind us. That was actually a devastating move on our part. I didn't expect it to work quite that well. But the gap is starting to go down 21 seconds now. But only a kilometer to go. 17 seconds, 13 seconds. They are starting to make moves in the back. And we're going to go ahead and launch our sprint. And with a 15 second, 13 second, 9 second, 8. It looks like we're going to hold on. We will celebrate as soon as we cross the line. And we will take stage three. A stage that was sorely needed after all those second places in a row. And there we are on the top step of the podium with a six second gap to Oldani, Baudin, and Dubé. Which is actually great news because we do get bonus seconds as well. Which will give us a 12 second gap over Stefano Aldani going into the last stage, which is a flat stage. And here is that final stage, 175.4 kilometer flat stage. And our only goal here today is going to be stick on Aldani's tail. Because if he doesn't beat us by more than two seconds, we will win GC for the Tour de Limousin. And here with 14k left in the stage, uh, everything has just been brought back together. We're coming up to the last climb and we want to push the pace a little bit so nobody tries any funny business. We can go ahead and collect our win for this tour. 
but it doesn't look like anybody's really interested in making a move. Jocelyn May is doing a great job taking win for us. I was really expecting Oldani or Gregoire to be very aggressive up this last little climb, but maybe they're hoping for that last little ramp that they can sprint up and maybe create some kind of a gap. I don't see that happening, but I mean, you never know what's going through different race directors' heads. But with 8.5 left, we are in a very strong position as Total Energy looks to come around and set the pace. And that's going to be Damien Tuza trying to attack over the top with Alex Baudin. Baudin is a threat. Tuza, not so much. If I'm not mistaken, we got to keep an eye on that. No, he's 3 minutes and 57 seconds back, so he can take the stage win all he wants. But we're going to get geared up to try and win this GC battle. As we go down this little downhill, we're going to use our energy gel. And there's old Donnie right there. We have eyes on him. And we're going to set it to 92 right from the bottom of this hill. And we're not going to start sprinting just yet. Old Donnie's starting to go, but... Oh, no. We started our sprint a little early, but... Anything we can do to try and stay with Oldani, this is going terribly. Hopefully there are no gaps. It looks like it's going to be Romain Gregoire that's actually going to hold us on to this front group. It's going to be Len Leonard, Boudat, and Askey. Oldani coming in fourth. I don't think he gets bonus seconds for that. So that should be a wrap on the GC for the Tour du Limousin. And it does look like we are going to be on the the same time for the finish which is lucky for us because we will take GC by 12 seconds ever over Stefano Oldani. Gregoire will come in third with 23 seconds but I have a feeling he's gonna be one of our main rivals throughout our career as we come in second in the best climber category we fall just short of winning the blue jersey as well Oldani takes it by eight points but we do take young rider and we are nowhere to be seen on the team classification, which is a rarity for us. And with that GC win, we do get 61 XP points. You can see we're getting very close to a level up, and we do get to add to our attributes finally. And with our recent run of great results, I think we're going to go ahead and refuse Saint Michel Mavic Albert 93's offer for next season. The only rider they have under contract in 2025 is Leo Bissio, and that's just not going to be good enough for a rider of our level now. And with the turn of the month, we do get our level up finally, right before the Britannia Classic. And it looks like, I think we've been putting all of our training points into stage races and climber, which stage race is looking pretty nice right about now. Climber, uh, nothing too special. I think stage races is actually better. And then sprinter, we could get our sprint up to 66, which would be use useful in punching situations, but I think stage races is definitely what we're going to take. Stamina up to resistance up, recovery up, and mountain will go up by two, as well as medium mountain. I mean, this is exactly what we need right now. And with our skill point, I think the World Championship showed how important willpower is. So I think we're going to go ahead and take level 2 and get 4 bonuses for the season. So we can take a minus 1 and turn it into a plus 3. And for our last race of the episode, we have the Britannia Classic West France. It says it's a 260.2 kilometer flat stage, but... That end looks pretty hilly to me, so we have every right to think we should be in with a shot, and we're going to make some attacks and see what we can do. And at the start of the race, the race director told us we were a Barador today, so we did jump out into a group that looks uh, pretty weak, if I'm being honest. Baudan and Vermarka might be able to work with us till the end, but we got to do what the race director says and hope we can get a good result here. And with 36k left, we have been caught by the Peloton. Don't know what the uh, 
strategy was there by the race director. I probably should have just ignored it, but, you know, we got to do what our boss says if we want to secure a contract for next season. And with 3.5k left, we have cracked. Our energy was not in a good place after trying to join that early breakaway, so we will not complete our team objective of finishing in the top 10, but I guess it was worth a try. It, against this type of field, we're not going to have a lot of success in a bunch sprint anyway, but we'll speed it up here a little bit. It's going to be Jasper Phillips, and at the end of the day, it was for the sprinters, and we are definitely not one of those. And that will bring to an end Season 2 of this Pro Cyclist mode. As that resulted, Britannia Classic West France has secured us a contract for next season. And I won't spoil it yet. You'll see in the next episode who we will be riding for. And hopefully, we will be in the World Tour next season. But I wanted to say thank you again for all your support on the series. Uh, if you liked what you watched, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe if you want to see more. I post at least one video on this series every week and one video of my Team Sky Career Mode series every Saturday or Sunday. But for now, just wanted to say thank you and see you later.